Scott Stern used to work at the CIA. In the CIA, he was a targeting officer where he helped select the targets for U.S. drone strikes across South and West Asia. These drone strikes killed more civilians than actual enemy targets, like in Afghanistan, where 90% of the targets were civilians, not enemy targets. Today, he works for Meta, the parent company of Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. As the senior manager of risk intelligence, his job is to target misinformation on these social media platforms, as well as finding malicious actors. Having such a horrible track record with the U.S. drone strikes, do we really believe he'll make good decisions at a major social media corporation? Scott is just one example of hundreds, most likely thousands, of former security state employees who have recently moved into social media positions. Former CIA, FBI, NATO, and even DOD personnel now work for major social media corporations like Google, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, and Twitter. The positions held by these former security state employees are in highly politically sensitive areas, such as trust, security, and content moderation. What are the implications of such a revolving door between social media and the U.S. security state? Why is there such a push from social media platforms to hire former security state agents? That's what we're talking about in this video. Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. Last year in 2021, Newsweek broke a major story uncovering the largest undercover force the world has ever known. According to this report, the Pentagon has built an army of undercover agents, at least 60,000 strong, in both uniform and civilian attire, both online and in real life. The article states, quote, The explosion of Pentagon cyber warfare, moreover, has led to thousands of spies who carry out their day-to-day -day work in various made-up personas, the very type of nefarious operations the United States decries when Russian and Chinese spies do the same. Now, if we don't already know, Google is the world's most used search engine, where over 90% of all searches on the web are used through Google. Nearly 3 billion people use Facebook and learn about the world and the latest news stories on the platform. Apparently, nearly 30% of the world gets their news from Facebook. Other social media platforms have exploded in the past decade as a major source for people to interact with current events in the world. All of these major social media platforms continue to hire more and more former U.S. security state employees. If you've watched or read many of the videos and articles published by the Global Network, you'll know that we stress the rising importance and significance of the cyberspace domain. Cyberspace is so important, it is considered a domain of warfare between the most powerful nations on Earth. It's also a domain of class struggle, where the people who own everything, the capitalists, continuously fight to keep their wealth, as well as to use this space to disseminate their propaganda to keep the status quo. It is really no surprise that social media platforms merge so easily with the security state. Yet, we constantly see people claiming that social media is a place of free speech, a place where we can objectively collect information to make better educated decisions in our own lives. These platforms host accounts from both the political left and the political right. And some of these social media platforms have grown so large, we should be fighting to keep it as a neutral ground to hear a variety of opinions. But what happens when former security state agents begin manipulating the algorithms to advance a certain political view? What happens when particular social media accounts are targeted, suppressed, banned, or even deleted? What are the implications of former U.S. security state employees working for the largest social media platforms in the world? In other words, where does the U.S. security state end and social media begin? To describe the implications as clearly as possible, let's look at what U.S. security state agencies do. 
Then try to understand what impacts they may have when entering the social media industry. Well-known whistleblower John Stockwell explains the role of the CIA. Well, one of the four principal functions of the CIA is to gather intelligence and, and ideally forward it to the, the president, the users of information, the policymakers, as they say. There are other functions, however, some of them more legitimate than others. One is to run secret wars, the covert action that's written and talked about so much, like what's happening in Nicaragua today from Honduras. Another thing is to disseminate propaganda to influence people's minds. And this is a major function of the CIA. And uh, unfortunately, of course, it overlaps into the gathering of information. You, you have contact with a journalist, you will give him true stories, you'll get information from him, you'll also give him false stories. Did you do buy his confidence with true stories? You buy his confidence and set him up. We've seen this happen in, uh, recently with Jack Anderson, for example, who, who has his intelligence sources, and he has also admitted that he's been set up by them. You know, every fifth story just simply being false. Uh, you also work on their human vulnerabilities to recruit them in a classic sense, to make them your agent so that you can control what they do, so you don't have to set them up sort of, you know, by, by putting one over on them. So you can say, here, plant this one next Tuesday. Can you do this with responsible reporters? Yes, the Church Committee brought it out in 1975, and then Woodward and Bernstein put an article in Rolling Stone a couple of years later. Uh, 400 journalists cooperating with the CIA, uh, including some of the biggest names in the business, mm -hmm. to consciously introduce the stories into the press. Well, give me a concrete example of how you use the press this way, how a false story is planted and how you got it published. Well, for example, in my, my war, the Angola war that I helped to manage, uh, one third of my staff was propaganda. Ironically, it's called covert action inside the CIA. Outside, that means the violent part. Uh, I had propagandists all over the world, principally in London, Kinshasa, and Zambia. We, were, we would take stories which we would write and put them in the Zambia Times, and then pull them out and send them to a, a journalist on our payroll in Europe. But his cover story, you see, would be that he, would, he had gotten them from his stringer in Lusaka, who had gotten them from the Zambia Times. We had the complicity of the government of Zambia, Kenneth Kaunda, if you will, to put these false stories into his newspapers. But after that point, the journalists, uh, Reuters and AFP, uh, the management was not witting of it. Now, our contact man in Europe was, and we pumped l just, just dozens of stories about Cuban atrocities, Cuban rapists. Uh, in one case, we had the Cuban rapists caught uh, and tried by the Ovimbundu maidens who had been their victims, and then we ran photographs that made almost every newspaper in the country of the Cubans being executed by the Ovimbunda women who supposedly had been their victims. But you, these were and, fake photos? Oh, absolutely. We didn't know of one single atrocity committed by the Cubans. It was pure, raw, false propaganda to, to create a, an illusion of communists, you know, eating babies for breakfast and that sort of totally false propaganda. On top of all this, a recent CIA director, Mike Pompeo, has infamously said, I, When I was a cadet, what's the, first, what's the cadet motto at West Point? You will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. Hey. I, I, I was a CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, and stole. It's, it was like, we, we, had, we, had entire, we had entire training courses. Uh, it... Uh, it, it, it reminds you of the, uh, uh, the glory of the American experiment. Now, Alan McLeod from Mint Press News has written extensively on the topic of social media corporations hiring security state employees. Here's what he had to say. Despite the efforts to brand itself as a progressive, woke organization, the Central Intelligence Agency remains deeply controversial. It has been charged with the overthrowing or attempting to overthrow numerous foreign governments, and some of them democratically elected. Helping prominent Nazis escape punishment after World War II, funneling large quantities of drugs and weapons around the world, 
penetrating domestic media outlets, routinely spreading false information and operating a global network of black sites where prisoners are repeatedly tortured. Therefore, critics argue that putting operatives in this organization in control of her news feeds is deeply inappropriate. So how can Google, Facebook, Twitter, and others be impartial to the political events happening in the world today when so many of their employees were literally trained by the U.S. government to explicitly lie, cheat, and steal in order to achieve a particular political result that in itself is objectively opposed to being impartial? These former agents have killed people around the world in order to benefit the system of capitalist imperialism, which can only exist by oppressing and exploiting the so-called underdeveloped world. Their hands are dirty from lying, cheating, and stealing, and now they control what we see on social media. Some might ask, why are social media corporations even hiring security state agents? There's three simple reasons. One, They have already undergone extensive training in intelligence and cyber operations, mainly under taxpayer money, so social media corporations don't have to pay to train or use time to train new employees. Two, these agents already have security clearances, which are difficult and time-consuming to attain as a civilian. These security clearances help with highly politically sensitive sections of the corporations. And three, former agents can spend a few years at a social media office, learn new sets of skills, as well as making strong relationships, and then bring them back into the agency. The former CIA targeting officer, Scott Stern, is just one example of thousands who now hold positions at the largest social media platforms in the world, and they sit in the highest positions of politically sensitive decision-making, which can have significant influence on public opinion on virtually any political issue in the world. Jacqueline Lepore is currently the Senior Intelligence Collection and Trust and Safety Manager at Google. Before that, she worked at the CIA for over a decade, where she worked for U.S. imperialism in South Asia and the Middle East, and she wrote papers for the U.S. president. Jeff Lazarus was a CIA analyst for the economy and political issues for five years. In 2017, he was hired by Google as a policy advisor for trust and safety, mainly focusing on the suppression of, quote, extremist content. In 2021, he began working for Apple. Emily Vatcher was FBI for a decade, then became director of trust and safety for Facebook and its parent company, Meta. Kanish Karen previously worked as a research associate for the Atlantic Council's Digital Forensics Research Lab. The Atlantic Council is NATO's semi-official think tank. He now works for Twitter as an information integrity and safety specialist, essentially controlling what Twitter views as legitimate information and nefarious disinformation. Susanna Morrow was an intelligence officer for the DOD. In 2015, she left her post to become director of global security intelligence for Meta. Again, Meta is the parent company for Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Aaron Berman was employed by the CIA for 15 years. He reached the top ranks of the CIA where he prepared daily briefings for the President of the United States. Now he works for Meta as a Senior Product Policy Manager for Misinformation. Here's a friendly video Facebook made featuring Aaron, who forgot to mention he is formerly a CIA employee. What does your job entail? We're part of the team that writes the rules for Facebook. If something violates our standards for safety and security, what Facebook could, should, can do. You and your team are faced with very important decisions, especially when it comes to content. There's very little agreement whether we should be leaving more content up, taking more content down. With any particular rule or issue that we're looking at, where something has come up, where the rules are not 100% clear, we're not gonna make everybody happy. How does your team work on that? Transparency is incredibly important in the work that I do. How do we think about the balance between harmful content and protecting freedom of speech? It's a balance. We should all be very concerned about who is behind the controls of the social media platforms used by the majority of the world. 
Public opinion has been and is being manipulated in order to serve the interests of the ruling class, to serve the imperialist state, and to serve the system of capitalist imperialism. Major corporations, especially social media platforms, are too close and cozy to the U.S. security state. If we think about this critically, we should understand that when we use social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and others, we should put on our critical thinking hat. Social media has great potential, but it sits in the hands of nefarious actors, such as former U.S. security agents, who have a long track record of committing illegal and immoral acts to serve imperialism. And that's what they continue to do, serve imperialism. They do not serve the people. Until social media is in the hands of the people, it won't primarily serve our interests. This doesn't mean we should all just get off of social media, but we should be disciplined in the way we use it, understanding that the algorithms that control what we see and read are being manipulated. This requires an honest effort to search and find news, accounts, perspectives that are outside of the mainstream view of such events. In the fight against corporations, capital, imperialism, and all injustices, we need to understand that this fight transfers over into the domain of cyberspace. Electronic devices are now an integral part of most humans on Earth, whether you want it to be or not. Some have considered the mobile phone as an extension of ourselves, connected to our arms wherever we go. This device holds our passwords, login information, credit card information, and connections to our loved ones, our friends, and comrades. The capitalists know this probably better than we do. The fight against injustice is also a fight against the propaganda war within cyberspace. This is the cyberspace information war in social media.